The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 25 minutes to go until the start of trading. And you got markets in positive territory to kick things off. One stock not in positive territory this morning, Netflix, to put it lightly. We'll get into that in a moment. But boy, talk about a miss, man, and they are getting punished this morning. You get the S&Ps, though, up 17 points right now. You're trading up four tenths percent at 44.77. NASDAQ 100 up 57 points, 14,275. Four, that's four tenths percent as well. You get the Dow nearing 35,000. Not that long ago, a week ago, we were at 34,000. Up 134 points in the Dow, 34,975. Russell up 15 points as well. Bitcoin back above 42,000, 42,055. Crude rocking. Crude's up $1.20 at 103.25. We talked to our man Teddy Kegstad today at 40 past the hour. Love talking some crude oil with Teddy. Uh, we'll talk some Forex as well. Stay tuned for that one at 40 past the hour. We jump to gold, pulling back from the highs we had. Monday, $2,003 this morning. Make it down to 1941. Gold's down nine dollars this morning. 1949.70. Silver off 22 pennies as well. 25.16, and we jump to notes and bonds. A slight reprieve of the slightest, slightest reprieves, folks. Uh, you're talking about a 10-year yield right now. Pretty remarkable that I can talk about a reprieve in the 10-year, and we're sitting at 2.9%. Not too much of a reprieve, considering where we are. But nonetheless, you do get. Uh, a little bit of higher price in terms of yesterday's action. You back it up to where we were at about 9 p.m. Eastern time last night. You're at 118.19. And just like that, you traded up almost a full point from 9 a.m. until about 7.30. We've given up some of that. Right now, you're technically positive by three ticks on the session. But you're sitting at 2.9%, man, on that tenure. Seems like 3% might be coming at us. I don't know if we got 3% last night. We probably were pretty close at 118.19, man. You put this thing... On a daily, I talk about it all the time, man. We were in quite a trend line to lower prices and higher yield, folks. This market has broken out in dramatic fashion. We're at 2.9% right now. I do imagine you'll get a bounce at some point. Maybe you bake it back within that channel line, but you're still talking about lower prices and higher yields, even within that channel line. Uh, 119.06, we make it to a low, 118.19. Lowest prices, highest yield we've seen about four years. Remarkable. Let's jump over to the VIX this morning. VIX pairing some of the gains. We're back to about 20 at 2020 on the volatility index. All right, let's get into it, man. Who you talk about an earnings miss? Uh, how's that chart look for you, right? 700 to 350. That looks like a rough one. Well, guess what, folks? That one does not have the overnight session in. We're going to open at 250. So much for 350. Just shave another hundred dollars off the price of Netflix, and there you go. We're talking about still trading lower right now. Excuse me. All the streaming companies getting punished here. Not sure if that's fair. We're going to find out in the long term. But this morning, you are. You're talking about Roku getting punished in a big way. Disney, uh, I've been able. They're getting punished in a big way. 360 last night to 249. And as I said, folks, it just keeps going. And I can't blame the market. Pretty startling report out there from Netflix. You spike initially to 270. You settle at about 260. We're now trading at 249.88, folks. You are down an even $100 on the price of Netflix. Now, if you jump over, remember, you had about a $35 move priced into the earnings. $100 just crushes it, man. Uh, they lose subscribers for the first time. Now, jumping down to the fundamentals, okay? You're talking about a company that was valued at $150 billion yesterday. Today, they are valued at $111 billion. <laughs> remarkable uh and that is off of about almost 275 i think was at their high they were valued at 700 dollars was the high so you almost multiply it times three yeah you're talking about maybe 300 billion dollars was their market cap at the highs you're at 111 right now and you are going to see a drastic cut in your market cap when you miss on the estimates like they have now 
I'm going to back this up on a daily. Okay. Things really falling out of bed the last earnings season, but boy, you're going to, I mean, you're talking about trading from 500 bucks to 250. That's down from 700. Now, one of the big aspects that drove them lower when they announced their earnings in January for the final quarter of 2021 was their forecast. Okay, they had originally forecasted for the quarter that they just came in with at about 8.5 million subscriber ads. And they said, hold on, we were way ahead of ourselves. We're going to trim that back harshly. We're going to say we're only going to add 2.5 million subscribers for the quarter that they just announced on yesterday after the close. There was a lot of talk on the street that they had under promised that they had said, you know what, we're going to take a beating no matter what. Let's go low to make sure that we under promise and we over deliver, right? Let's really put a number out there that we think we can hit because the last thing we want to do is go from 8.5 to 2.5 and we miss the 2.5, right? So the street said, you know what, maybe they're being a little cautious. Maybe they're going to come in at three to four. I saw one accolade out there, one statistic saying just from pure streaming volume, uh, one analyst or, or somewhere out there, they were talking about maybe the streaming numbers alone were pointing to the fact they might have added 4 million. Well, what happened, folks? They lost 200,000 subscribers. First time they've lost subscribers since 2011. Losing subscribers, that is not growth, okay? Uh, they have some serious free cash flow here, okay? Now, it in your mind, because I'm doing these gymnastics in my own mind, all right? And I'm saying, okay, you now have a company valued at $111 billion. They're probably going to be around for some foreseeable period of time, as in they're the leader in streaming right now. I got kids in the house, folks, all right? They're, they're, their brains are attuned to that Netflix uh, sound when it comes on, right? Uh, it's going to be around, but is it going to be the leader Forever. Well, we'll see. Now, the, the question about the free cash flow, when you're talking about a company now valued at $110 billion, can it get cut in half again? Can it be valued at $55 billion? Anything's possible, folks. Great conversation in the Tiger's Den yesterday. If you haven't checked out the den yet, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, they were saying, just because it's gone so low, don't think it can't go any lower, man. And a uh, couple of tigers in there, tigresses having a good laugh, saying, I've been bitten by that one before. I think we all have, folks. When you see a stock go from 700 to 350, uh, the theoretical hypothetical trade I laid out yesterday was just saying, because people are thinking about it, if you wanted to, did not end up taking this trade or sending out to subscribers, um, partly because of some of the great discussions going on in the tiger's den out there. If you think you can't go any lower, you're wrong. Because the price yesterday was 350, and you had risk on both sides of that trade. And we now see, of course, you go down to 250. Don't make the same mistake again. Don't say to yourself that there's not risk to the downside when you're trading at 250. And here's the fundamental part of that. Okay, the fundamental part of that is they have free cash flow right now, and we're going to get into some of the numbers of this more so. But if they cannot compete, okay, I saw a great Bloomberg analyst talking about this last night, and it was a great point. If they can't compete with scripted shows, which that's the, what they're the king of right now, right? They're not the king of live sports. They're the king of scripted shows, okay? And they've delivered in pretty dramatic fashion with some serious hits of scripted shows. Maybe that's not going to live up to what they need anymore. And maybe they're going to have to start going out there and paying for premium content to the likes of live sports. Maybe. And if you have another upheaval of spending, maybe that free cash flow goes bye-bye. I mean, when are they going to be able to turn the spigot on for profits, right? Let alone, we haven't discussed, they're going to start selling ads. That's a big one as well. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 15 right now. NASDAQ positive by 38. You got the Dow up 122. We got Netflix shares right now trading down an even $100 at $248.70. We closed last night at $348.60. Remarkable pullback for Netflix shares, uh, losing 200,000 subscribers for the first time. They're going to have uh, a new subscription service at a cheaper price that's going to be ad-supported in the next year or two. That may be the scariest thing of all, shifting the entire business plan, Reed Hastings for a while there saying no 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 we're going to be charging subscriptions we're not going to be selling ads and guess what that all changes when they can't grow anymore all right let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks every trading day folks 12 noon eastern time on the TD Ameritrade network right here on Tiger TV your host Kevin Hinks Tom White they break down the day's market action they walk you through hypothetical trade setups Kevin Hinks where do we start man good morning good morning Tommy O'Brien you know how do you transition from a growth stock to a value stock? And I guess the, the answer to that is you go from $700 to $248. Oof. I guess that's Remarkable, one way to do Kevin. it. Remarkable, uh, Kevin. Um, but this, this is going to be, you know, there, there's not a lot of people that really called for this. It looks like uh, Netflix is going to open up down about $100 here. It, it's a little bit of a surprise in terms of data, but the lesson to be learned from this is Look at the price action in the four major indices today. One stock does not make a market. And uh, Netflix's issues, and they're not earnings. They earned plenty of money, but they're just not growing like they were. And they're transitioning to a, a different company with competition. And frankly, they need more hits, right? Uh, you know, once you, when Netflix started, Tommy, they were playing Friends and Seinfeld and old shows like that that were all hits. Now when you start coming out with new content, it's more of a batting average. And if your batting average dips and people start to go back outside in the spring and post-COVID and your numbers dip, you, you've got to have an answer. And password sharing is going to come up. I think um, advertising will come up eventually, maybe not in the short term, but they're going through a pretty critical time in their company's history, Tommy. 
Yeah, Reed Hastings, I believe on the call, he had talked about that they are looking into an ad-supported service at a cheaper price in the next year or two. Very general yep. statements out there, so nothing concrete. Uh, but that one caught my ear, because for a while, he has been pretty adamant on the fact that, no, 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 we have a service, we charge a subscription for it, we're not getting into ads. Uh, you could see a little fear there as they change things up completely. Like you said, from 348 to 248 uh, $100. And you make a great point, man. They are they're they're making some cash right now for sure i heard one analyst out there last night on bloomberg kevin and they made a great point i forget who it was i should get the name because i talked about it already this morning um they are the king of scripted shows right now that's what they do you know they do scripted shows and they've had a ton of big hits man um but what happens kevin if they have to start spending again right what if spending on scripted shows isn't living up to it what if they find the need to get into other areas, particularly what if they start saying, hey, you know what, live sports is the king right now. What if we wanna go compete for live sports? Man, you're talking about competing with who? Bezos and Amazon and Apple, um, just a lot up in the air, man, but whew, remarkable pullback in the Tigers den, Kevin, they were saying yesterday, um, don't think because it's gone so far that it can't go any low lower. We've been bitten by that before, and Netflix is a great example, folks. When you think a stock's can cut in half, um, don't think it can't go lower because because there is risk on both sides of that trade. If it's trading at 348 yesterday, it's trading at 348, folks. Forget about 700. That was when they were talking about adding millions and millions and millions of subscribers this quarter, Kevin, last quarter, and now they're looking for the next quarter, losing two million. So it's a big shift, man. Um, you almost can't overstate how big of a shift it is. They haven't lost subscribers since 2011, man. Remarkable. And the other streamers, of course, paying the price. That's an interesting conversation in terms of, you know, does Disney deserve to be trading down $5 today on Netflix? Maybe, man. We'll see. We'll find out. Roku, uh, probably going to have a hit because obviously if people aren't signing up for Netflix, they have a less need for streaming uh, in entirety. Roku down from 490 now sitting at 108. Uh, but as you say, I was a little bit interested, not even worried, interested, Kevin, because futures were down last night. And I said, yep. is this going to be kind of a market sentiment where people just to kind of take a huge miss and say, is this more than even streaming, right? Is this something that people are holding their checkbooks? Doesn't seem to be the case so far this morning with the S&Ps up 15 points. Uh, some of the other stocks out there, IBM actually trading higher, Kevin. We're trading at 132 right now from 129. You guys talked about Procter & Gamble yesterday. They're almost flat right now, trading up about a dollar after some volatility spiked to 163. You're at 160 this morning. Um, pretty resilient market right now with quite a miss for one of those marquee numbers last night. We got the 10-year yield, Kevin, still sitting at about 2.9% as this market. I mean, you think about it, Kev, it was at 4,800 at all-time highs. We're sitting almost at 4,500 right now, and yields just through the roof. What's your general take on how resilient this market's been? And I say only 300 points off the highs, but I think if you told people, Kevin, and I'm going back to super general here, if you told people that the yields were going to do what they were, have done in the first you know, three and a half months of the year, I think that the market at 4,500 might be okay with a lot of investors. What's your take on just the general market here with yields, like almost as high as I can imagine them by April 20th? Yeah, I mean, some of the discussion in the last couple of days have been yields and the U.S. dollar, right? Well, both of those are relatively quiet today. And the question that I just brought up with Oliver Rennick was, well, is it, is it, is it a chicken and egg, right? What are the markets up because the dollar and yields are quieter this morning, or are the is the dollar down and yields quiet because stocks seem to be firming here and finding some bids down in some of these? So it's kind of interesting how that relationship plays out. But you know, if if your people are watching the markets today, you know the the, the lower U.S. dollar is good for stocks. The the quieter ten year yield is probably good for stocks. This market will show that a healthy U.S. economy can handle higher interest rates. What it has trouble with is spiking interest rates and yields, which is what we've gotten lately. So if, if the 10-year yield, which, you know, let's face it, Tommy, has discounted a lot of rate hikes already in it at 2.9%, 2.88, as we sit here pre-open. If it starts to quiet down and stay in a range, stocks could look very attractive again at some of these valuations. 
I mean, some of the moves, Kevin, I know you know it, but I'm looking at the S&P futures on the Thinkorswim platform just on a 15-minute basis. Sunday night, folks, we were trading at 43.55. We're 125 points above that price level right now. 120, actually, as I look at it, 44.75. Just huge moves, man. Uh, so we transitioned from Netflix, Kevin. We got some big names coming out. What are you guys talking about today on Fast Market coming up at noon? In the first segment, we'll look at Lamb Research. They have earnings coming up. And then, like Foley, will do a presentation on the airlines, United Airlines and American coming out with earnings. And then we were the, – the last one's a little bit in flux. We, we may we, – we looked at Tesla on Monday. We may look at it again. We may look at AutoNation. It's, the, the last segment of the show is currently in discussion as how we want to handle it. But uh, LAM Research and the airlines to start the show. Perfect. We'll, we'll keep them guessing. You got to tune in, folks, for the third segment. <laughs> Lamb Research this morning. You're catching a bid with the market. You're up to 496 from 479. And yeah, the airlines, I heard you guys talking about yesterday. Interesting action with the mask mandate going down. Uh, all of a sudden, airlines catch a pop at that travel sector, man. That's an interesting one nonetheless as we get a rebound from travel. Uh, Delta, they talked the biggest cash sales they had in the month of March. Kevin, we appreciate the time, man. We'll be watching at 12 today. Have a great one, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Take care. We'll be right back for the open, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P up 17 points right now, trading at 44.76. And as I was talking to Kevin Hinks, you put this thing back on a five-year weekly, folks, okay? Five-year weekly. You could almost just, let's go back a three-year weekly, okay? You get the full COVID acceleration to 2174. We get a one-way trip from 2174 to 4800, folks, to start off this year. Yes, you do pull back to about 4,000. What's the low? Technically, end of February, 4101. The low 41.29 in the middle of March. We're trading right now at 44.77. I'm telling you, folks, you look at this chart on a longer term basis. We barely got a pullback right now. Okay, you started 2020 off at 3200. We're trading 1250 points above that price level. You're trading 40 percent above where we started 2020 off as we came into a pandemic, the likes that many of us had never seen before. Keep that in mind when you think about what's possible, folks, in terms of pullbacks. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but man, you see the surprises in Netflix. First time since 2011, losing subscribers. They are going to try and start an ad supported service. That one's the scariest of all, because that means Reed Hastings is questioning the business plan that they've stuck with since inception of streaming. That's a scary one, folks, when you think about where they go. They were at 8.5 million subscribers for the current quarter. Then they went down to 2.5 million subscriber ads. It comes in at a decrease of 200,000. How hard do you think they were trying to make sure that they didn't come in at a decrease, right? You know that executives were watching that number, man, saying, can we can we put some money into advertising to boost it? You know, we're only talking about 200,000 subscribers. On a company like that, what can we do to get that number in the positive? They couldn't do it. And now they're going to come in at a loss of $2.5 in the next quarter. So maybe, maybe they really were trying, maybe if they weren't spending the extra money to try and push that number to to positive, they maybe they would have come in at a minus million or something like that. Maybe that's why the next quarter is going to be down 2.5 because what they've been doing is not working. They're going to start cracking down on people sharing passwords. That's not necessarily going to transition to new subscribers, folks. If you're sharing passwords with family members, uh, it's not necessary, necessarily going to transition to you take that password, you know, that one family member that was maybe willing to use your subscription. They might not be willing to pay themselves, folks. Now, Netflix is trying to say, oh, you can add the family member at a discounted rate, all this stuff. That gets pretty complicated, folks. Reed Hastings understood the brilliance of their business plan when it was working. No, we are signing people up for subscriptions. We're not selling advertising. That is old media. Well, guess what? Now they're selling advertising. Everybody's selling advertising, folks. All right, Peacock sells advertising. That's going to be a whole different plan. People do not watch Netflix to watch ads. They don't do it. They've been drilled into their head that that is one of the benefits of watching Netflix, right? You never have to worry about that ad popping up like you do Google, YouTube, the likes. Um, even Disney had come out, I think it was last quarter or the quarter before, they had already realized that there was enough opportunity there to boost the average revenue per user by starting a subscription plan that was going to be ad supported. Uh, so they might have seen the writing on the wall as well. Nonetheless, let's jump over to Disney and some of the other streamers real quick. So you got Disney down 4.2% today on that number. What I'll say about Disney, folks, you're talking about a company now valued at about $230 billion. Yes, $230 billion, almost on the dot right now. Uh, prior to COVID, all right, let's back Disney out on the five-year weekly. Prior to COVID, okay, uh, yes, so we're talking about the year 2019. Now, some of these volatile moves on Disney in 2019 had to do with the launch of Disney+. Plus. I believe the first time this thing catches a bid, you go from about 115 to 130. That was when they first announced the pricing structure for Disney. I'm going to have to get all these dates exactly, all right? I'll do it again. I've done it on my program before. But it's important to understand what this stock was priced at pre-Disney+. Plus because there is a substantial value in this company above the streaming folks. When you're talking about a company, Disney's valued at 230 billion. You now have Netflix valued at 111 billion. I think at one point Netflix was above Disney, which made no sense whatsoever. <clears throat> Disney in 2019, I believe they had 10 different movies that all gross $1 billion at the box office. One of the reasons why I love Disney so much versus Netflix over the last few years is because Netflix does not have any type of business that has box office gross, let alone the merchandising that comes on top of it. Folks, I live near Disney. My goodness, the amount of straight up merchandising that exists from Disney itself, uh, I think we all get the point. 
you're back to 126, you're back to the 618 almost exactly from the full COVID run it had from 79 to 203. And listen, if this market takes a beating, folks, everything's gonna take a beating, okay? But if you're looking at getting in Disney, you've now filled the gap that you had back there from a November of 2020. You're back to 126, you're back to the 618, you've had a little bit of support here. You're basically back to basic levels that before we even knew the pricing structure of Disney Plus, let alone when this thing goes public, uh, excuse me, when it goes live. Something to consider. They're paying a price for Disney today. Uh, they're paying a price for Netflix, excuse me, and you're back to 126. All right. In the long run, folks, I tell you, we were just in Orlando for my birthday. Went to the JW Marriott in Orlando. Outstanding hotel. That was March 20th, about a month ago. Exactly a month ago. Today's April 20th. Happy 420 to Elon Musk and everybody out there. Uh, March 20th, I was out there, JW Marriott. We were thinking about going to Disney. Well, shame on us for not figuring out that guess what? That was around spring break. Disney, Disney was sold out. You couldn't even go. They didn't have any extra tickets. I didn't even know that happened. Well, yeah, it happened, folks. Uh, it was spring break. It's not always like that. I'll check it, the commercial break coming up, uh, if they're full right now. But you couldn't even get into Magic Kingdom if you wanted. There was no premium pricing. There was nothing. Straight out sold out. All right, we're seeing the airlines come back. Disney's going to come back, folks. I just saw, I think, a couple days ago for the first time, hugs are back at Disney. Uh, for a couple years, hugs were not there. They didn't want everybody hugging with the pandemic. Hugs are back. The kids can go hug uh, Mickey Mouse if they want when they get to meet him, all that stuff. It's coming back, folks. Disney's going to benefit greatly, let alone in the movie theaters they're going to benefit. Um, I encourage you to keep that one on your radar. They are going to go back up at some point. And if I'm looking at Disney versus Netflix, folks, <clears throat> Netflix has, is a one-trick pony. For the longest time, and I have a small portion of Netflix shares in my retirement, folks, okay? I understand. I don't have them at 700, thank goodness. Excuse me. Uh, so I understand the attractiveness of Netflix, and at $110 billion, people can probably make that similar argument. But as I laid out, Netflix might have to up the ante on what they're spending. They might have to say, we need more than scripted programming to compete. They might start burning through cash yet again. Where does the end exist for Netflix where they stop spending money and are actually able to start just printing profit? That's a tough one when you're always going to be keep competing with some of the biggest companies in the world. No matter what happens to Disney, you're always going to be competing with Amazon and Apple. That is a tough one, folks, because they can spend money on programming that's basically no impact is one way to say it on their fundamentals i mean apple spending money yeah they spend 20 billion dollars that's pretty substantial okay but 20 billion dollars of apple's market cap what are we sitting at right now just shy under three trillion probably yeah uh apple is sitting on a market cap of 2.75 trillion dollars okay to put things in context apple has 16.3 billion shares outstanding. So if they spend $16.3 billion on content, that's akin to that stock price moving $1. Well, and a Netflix is only worth $111 billion. If they spend $16 billion on content, that's 15% of their entire market cap. You get the point, okay? It's a tough one. Uh, we'll go over it a little bit more, but when we come back, folks, we're gonna be talking some Forex. We'll be talking a little bit of crude as well with our man Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll Are right you back. in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-322. 829-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, 
is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the market right now jumping over the S&P. We got S&P futures up 13 points right now, trading at 44.73. We get the markets rocking. And uh, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad from Forex-Trading-Unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. We've been talking some Forex. We've been talking some crude oil. We've been talking some Japanese yen. And I got a chart of that yen up here to kick <laughs> things off, Teddy. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. I think the yen is exactly where we should start. I, I you, listen. It's uh, you've made some outstanding calls lately, man. The yen is one of them. Let's do it, man. I got to chart up, and it's so almost a one-way trip outside of that one reversal we got um, with the central bank over there. Uh, but yes, we let's start it off. I got it up here on a mm -hmm. daily basis, Teddy. Uh, what are you looking at of this yen now that we hit 129.39 <laughs> this morning, man? Well, you hit the key when you just said central bank. So uh, yesterday, and this is is breaking news across many news different sources. Uh, the Japanese Times and the, and the Financial Times were the ones that really first started it, was that uh, there's a divergence in what's going on with the Japanese uh, financial system. So the Bank of Japan came out yesterday and said that they are going to buy unlimited bonds to keep the rate at a quarter percent in uh, Japan. Okay, so that totally goes against what we said, remember, two weeks ago when we said that they're going to defend their currency? Yes. Well, you don't, def you don't defend your currency by buying your bond market. You, you do the opposite. You sell, sure. you sell your bond market, okay? So now the finance minister for uh, Japan is totally in the opposite thought. Like now they've obviously been on a low interest rate curve for a long time. They've been there the longest, okay? However, <clears throat> when it comes to defending your currency, which is something that they think they definitely need to do, you don't buy bonds. You don't try and reduce rates. You know, you've you got to sure. go on the opposite, especially when the whole rest of the world is increasing rates. I mean, no yeah. one's talking about cutting rates, let alone supporting their bond market. Every, every central bank is cutting back on their purchases, you know? So so that's a very key thing that happened yesterday because remember we had the 130 price target? I well, sure we do, coming, man. We, we were coming, we almost hit it yesterday, okay? And then this news came out. So now today, if you look at the yen, we spiked a little bit higher, okay? And now it's, what I see right now is a little bit of a profit-taking mode because sure. you have the euro is up, the pound is up, the Aussie's up. So if all these other baskets occur, <clears throat> the major currencies are up, the dollar is under pressure. And you got to remember, the bond market did make a lower move low today, but that now they're a little bit higher on the day, you know? So it's just a little profit-taking move, you know, as far as that 
that momentum is concerned. At least that's the way I'm viewing it right now. Now, as far as a price target, that line in the sand now is com completely, I, I have to say, it's off the table because there's no way that you're going to be able to defend your currency and also hold your, try and hold up your bond market at the same time. It's just it's, it's, it's a tug of war that you can't go anywhere with. So that's why I think the yen is still going to be a bull. And if the one of the reason I, I really truly believe that is, remember two weeks ago when they first talked about defending their currency, that was the first correction they'd had in a while, and it's the only one they've had in the last month. Okay, yeah. and that was a that was a three day slide, and it came back pretty fast. Because remember when we talked two weeks ago, I said, hey, I'm like. You know, I thought that they were they were, they were taking a little bit too much profit taking off of that high, and that's when I looked into it and saw how the central bank made that comment about defending their currency. So we had a three-day slide there because of that. Now we have this divergence between the head of the finance ministry and also the Bank of Japan going in two different directions on what they want to do. So that means that that what happened two weeks ago, you're not going to get that kind of correction. So I think the pullback you have today is a short-term little profit-taking break. But with oil up, and especially if the interest rates start to hit the lows again, which I do believe they will, you know, then I think you're going to see our 130 price target. Now, I would say that you might see the U.S. dollar yen at 140, especially if you see the Treasury bonds get down to like 125, you know, something like that. And could you talk a little bit about Teddy? Because I was a little bit surprised. So two weeks ago, you, you let us know the fundamental reason for that pullback, which was them talking about that they're going to kind of set that upper limit that they wanted, right? And was it mm -hmm. 130 or 131, Teddy? What was, what, they, 130, what was that? 130 was the number, yes. 130 they, was the they number. They explicitly said 130. Okay, so you let us know that. Some great information that explains some of the pullback. I got it up here. We see it's it's almost the only three red bars on this chart, man, going back to March mm -hmm. 7th. I think we actually have uh, two other red bars prior to the one today. Um, then you come on last week, and you're a bull, which I was surprised with, considering that you would think— <laughs> Right. You uh -huh. would think that your 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 profits are capped. Right. You're in a trade right. potentially where you're bullish at 124, 125, wherever we are. And mm -hmm. the central bank over there is saying you're capped at 130. Can you walk us through a little bit? Because, I mean, great call where we are right now. And I know mm -hmm. you did it last week, but for some of the listeners that might not have caught it, what was the transition that allowed you to maybe turn into a bull even with the central bank talking about trying to keep it below 130 and you'd be buying it at 125. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because from where we are right now, it's outstanding call and even the fundamental aspect has changed. <laughs> Thank you. But I thought that was so cool, especially from what happened over the last you know seven days. Uh, well, I think one of the biggest things that helped me become a bull against the yen again was because at the same token, while the dollar was very strong against the euro, the pound and the Aussie, they were slowing. So the euro was the one that was under the most pressure, but the Aussie now is in actually, it's not just in a correction, it's in a bullish trend now. You know, every break has been a, it's been a higher move low. And when we started cool. to bounce with those two markets last week, you know, on certain points, that's where I could see that I w would look at the pound yen and the, and the Aussie yen. And I started, to, I've got long, I've been long those now for two weeks as well, you know, because those trends are so solid that the yen is not just a bearer when it comes to the US dollar, it's a bear with every other currency out there. So that yes. means that as long as the dollar is still strong against the Aussie and is strong against the pound and is strong against the euro, and especially because the euro right now is off its lows. So any upside move it has now is just a correction. The dollar is very strong. So as long as the dollar is strong against those currencies and those currencies are strong against the yen, you got to be a bull. How is, the, how, is the, how is the yen going to become a bear against the US dollar, especially now because like I said, with, remember how I was adamant about how when it hits 130, it's going to be like a nuclear bomb. They're going to hit that, pull that trigger right yes. away. But yeah. now with the Bank of Japan going revert, cool. they just reversed. They completely reversed their stance last yesterday. You it's know, great I'm information, saying. man. I, can't, I appreciate you sharing it with all our listeners out there. We had a question, Teddy, earlier, yeah. uh, anticipating you were coming on the program from one of our guys mm -hmm. in the in the Den Dan talking about the Canadian dollar. Can we talk a little bit okay. about uh, the Canadian dollar because that's got some movement going on today as well. 
Yeah, that is, I tell you what, that's become a choppy mess over the last two weeks. In fact, I was streaming about, I just got back from vacation last night and I did a video nice. and I talked about the US dollar Canada where I was like, this one is totally a side scratcher, you know, like because geopolitically it's 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 a mess between especially the US and Canada. Um, and that's even on a financial aspect too when it comes to our economy and a whole bunch of just, it, it's, it's just yeah. a complete zoo, you know. Now, another thing yeah. that, as weird as the commodity issue is because you would think that with especially oil being strong and some other commodities being strong that the Canadian dollar be getting strength but <clears throat> I think that because of the slow of the way their economy is going and there's there's a big issue now as far as their debt level for their government and stuff like that that you never really heard this before COVID-19 messed up the Canadian economy in many many ways and I think it's going to be a bear US dollar Canada is going to be a long-term bear right now Man, we're going to have to start extending this to two segments if we get this type of action going on in the Forex market, Teddy. Listen, <laughs> thank it? you so much for the conversation, the education, as always, man. And we'll talk to you next Wednesday, Teddy. Thank you. Take care, Tom. Thank you. Take care, folks. Uh, we'll be right back for the final part of the program, folks. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets turning a little bit negative over the first 25 minutes of trading right now. You get the S&Ps barely sneaking into the red right now. And look at that sell-off we just got in the NASDAQ 100, man. You pop higher at 8, 7.30 in the morning to 14,000. We'll call it 14,300, just like that. You drop 200 points, 14,102. We jump over to Netflix shares, 30 
4.1%. And I think they're agreeing with me in the, in the beginning of the program, folks. Uh, you better wake up, man. They are changing their entire business model at Netflix. That is not strength, folks. All right, they're losing subscribers. They are completely changing that now they're going to start selling advertising for lower priced subscription plans that in itself should be alarm bells across the board now i've been at disney bull for a while folks they've been talking about this morning you don't get the same type of sell-off on disney on the open you're down seven dollars disney is not the same as netflix's one trick pony okay and man it was a hell of a trick when they had it going on okay but Netflix doesn't have a movie theater business, folks. This could be a huge breakout summer for movie theaters. I think I saw the trailer for Thor out there recently, a Marvel film. Uh, you got Disney Parks. Netflix has nothing like that. And then you have the Disney Plus streaming service, which is obviously paramount, no pun intended on paramount, paramount to the future of the company. Uh, but they have a lot more going on, folks. Disney's valued at $230 billion at this market cap right now. You're right at the 618 of where you've been. Uh, I would look at adding to that. The only disclaimer is, you know, market sells off. Everything's going to sell off, folks. But that's all you do. Um, and, you know. I keep going back to it because Netflix does not have what Disney has, folks. That's the reason why I'm not just a big person on streaming. I'm a big, big person on Disney, man. Disney Park sold out. There's only one Mickey Mouse, folks, all right? There's only one Star Wars. There's only one Marvel. They own them all. They get to merchandise them all. They get to put them all into movie theaters, uh, and they get the parks. America, folks, they are gung-ho to get back out, to travel, to visit Disney, to go to some movie theaters. Um, Disney's going to be in a position to benefit, and I imagine that's coming around the corner. Market, though, we might be in a dicey area, and that's the only thing a little bit worrisome. But at 125.76, folks, not the same Disney versus Netflix. Uh, down 4.6 today. We'll see. Could be a discount. Uh, not the action you want, but keep it on your radar, folks. Going to be an interesting day in the markets. S&Ps, positive by one. Stay tuned, folks. we got our man Basil Chapman up next. Larry, Fast Markets. Steve Rose, right. Tom O'Brien this afternoon.